Good evening, everyone. Today we're going to discuss something that we all face, um, that we all, it's important to everyone, and that's how we view our bodies. Nurturing a positive body image in children is crucial. Without it, their mental health and interactions with others can be negatively uh, affected. I'm Johan van Lul, and I'm the coordinator of the Kiro Learner Support Unit. So let's look at this uh, big picture. It's made out of many small ones. Uh, each little picture is a person, all different in looks, age, and where they come from. It's just like us. We all see our bodies in our own way. This big picture is like society. We all think about our bodies based on our own experiences and what others tell us. Why does what everyone thinks matter? And how can we feel good about ourselves? And how do I get my kids to feel good about their bodies? Look at the picture. You see how the girl looks skinny, but in the mirror, she sees herself as much bigger. This shows how sometimes we don't see ourselves the way we really are because of, of the of girls of outside influences. That big reflection is how things like society, TV shows, comments, social media, or personal experiences can make us see ourselves in a way that's not true. Have you ever felt like the reflection, seeing yourself differently than how you really are because of what someone said or something um, you saw and how it affects you? Our self view can be affected by so many things being aware of them is the first step to understanding them. And as we continue, think about what has influences how you see yourself. Knowing these things can help us all having a healthy view of ourselves. The way we see the perfect body nowadays is really complicated. Unlike the old days when one, one look stayed in fashion for many, many years, today, things change super fast because of the internet, TV, and influence from everywhere in the world. The pictures on the screen shows how the perfect body type has been changed over the years. From the rounder bodies in old art to the slim 1920s look, to the sporty bodies we see a lot today. What's in keeps on changing. What's tough for us today is that these changes happen super fast because of things like Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and the internet. And, what, and what's considered beautiful changes all the time. And that can make it hard to keep up. Think about it. Have these changing beauty trends ever affected how you see yourself? Um, have you ever felt the need to look in a certain way because it's in? As we talk more about this, uh, think about when you felt um, like you need to fit in um, in that in look and when you didn't, how did that make you feel? And that will give you an idea how so many of our teen teenagers feel every day. So body image is all about how we think we look, not always how we really look. Some people see themselves just as they are, but others might see something very different. Imagine looking in a mirror. What do you notice first? How do you feel about what you see? And our feelings are a big part of this. Uh, some might feel happy with their reflection, while others might feel a bit down. Have you ever had a day when you felt great about how you looked or not so great? That's all part of body image, and we don't just make up these feelings on our own. TV shows, friends, and what's popular all play a part. And what's considered the perfect body in movies or magazines isn't always real, but it can still affect how we feel. Think about the popular looks from the past. What was in in the 1960s is so different from the 1990s and now. And these trends can change how we see ourselves. Now, now look at the picture uh, on the slide of someone looking in a mirror with lots of words around them. 
and these words might be what they think about themselves or what others think. It shows just how complicated body image can be. So when we talk about body image, there are things that shape how we feel about ourselves. And these things can be divided into two big groups. What comes from the inside and what comes from the outside. For inside stuff, think about your personal beliefs. What do you believe is beautiful? And remember those times someone said something nice uh, or maybe not so nice about you. Those memories can also affect you and how you feel today about your body. Also, how you feel health-wise, both in body and mind, makes a big difference. On the outside stuff side, think about what society tells us is beautiful. Friends, family, and especially TV and social media tell us what is cool and what's not cool about how we should look. Now imagine the scale as you see in the picture. One side has the inside stuff on it and the other side has the outside stuff on it. Both sides affect how we see ourselves and they're always interacting. But for some people, one side might be heavier than the other. Maybe you care more about what you personally feel or perhaps, you, what, perhaps you're influenced a lot by what others say. So ask yourself, which side affects me more, my own feelings or what the world tells me? And knowing this can help you feel better about yourself. So let's talk about a big thing that affects us, and that's the media. From when we wake up until bedtime, we see and hear a lot from it, especially about how we should look. Media is everywhere today, and we need to get uh, to get how strong it and we need to get how strong it affects us, especially uh, what is the effect on young people, our children. So if you check out this picture, it shows how media is with us all the time. There's a TV and TV has been shaping our ideas of beauty for decades. Social media, while newer, is incredibly influential. It often portrays the perfect lives and bodies, especially on Facebook and all these social media. People really live perfect lives on them. And movies have been setting beauty standards for over a century. And then you get billboards everywhere telling us how we should look to fit in. So media reaches everyone. It gives us ideas about the perfect body type. Young people still figuring out who they are can be really hit by these ideas and it can change how they feel for a long time. So let's dive a little bit deeper into the media's influence. So let's spotlight these specific sectors that have historically been major players in shaping body perceptions. And that's television, movies, and advertising. So for decades, these media outlets have consistently broadcasted a particular look as ideal. From the waif-thin models of the 90s to the muscular superheroes of today, these mediums perpetuate a specific uh, body type as the pinnacle of attractiveness. An equally important observation is what's often missing from the screen, and that's diverse body types. Sizes and appearances are underrepresented, sending a subtle message about what's normal and what's desirable. This lack of representation can alienate many viewers, making them feel unseen or undervalued. There's also an unmistakably emphasis on looks over substance. Instead of celebrating health, resilience, intelligence, or kindness, these platforms often prioritize aesthetics um, and inadvertently su suggesting that one's worth is, is, is a stride to one's appearance. So moving on from traditional media, let's delve into the uh, relatively new but profoundly influenced world of social media. Platforms like Facebook and TikTok have become primary resources of information, connection, and unfortunately, comparison. Unlike TV or movies, social media is more personal, and we see our friends and family and acquaintances sharing snapshots of their lives. 
leading to inevitable comparisons. So over time, this constant benchmarking can erode self-esteem and as we judge our behind the scenes, uh, as we judge our behind the scenes against their highlight reels, it really gets tricky. Technology today allows everyone to alter images effortlessly, from simple filters to more advanced editing tools. That six pack that you see on the screen does not really exist. So what's portrayed on social media is often enhanced and not entirely altered versions of reality Recognizing this disparity is crucial. It's important for our kids to really understand these filters that can be applied to social media. And the ar architecture of social media platforms often resolves around feedback in the forms of likes, comments and shares. And again, emphasizing the perfect body. And over time, this can shift one focus from genuine self-expression to crafting posts for maximum validation. And this chase for external approval can be detrimental to authentic self-worth. Big stars and popular online personalities have a lot of fans, so they play a big role in setting beauty standards. But remember, they often show the best planned out version of themselves. Looking perfect isn't easy, and many celebrities have whole teams to help them look top-notch from makeup pros to fitness trainers. Yet many of us try to, to mimic their looks without that real kind of a backup team that we need to look like that. Beauty products promotions. A lot of these stars talk up certain uh, beauty products or trends, and sometimes because they pay to do it, it's not always genuine, and we need to figure out when they're just advertising and when they truly believe in the product. So copying the stars is also a big problem, especially for teens. A lot of fans aim to look just like their favorite celebrities. And so your child gives up their own body image for looking like the celebrity. And this can be tough and might make some feel down if they don't achieve that look. So look at the picture. One side has a celebrity all glammed up for an event and the other side shows relaxed and natural um, state that they are maybe at home. Both are real, but they're quite different. And something to ponder is that have you ever bought a product because a famous person endorsed it? How did that turn out for you? And it's a testament to the influence of the, our celebrity culture that we are living in. So we see a lot of media every day and it's important to know what's real and what's being edited. And being smart with media means spotting edited photos. There are, there are many tools today that change how photos look, like fixing blemishes or making someone look thinner. And knowing this, this help us realize that not all perfect photos are real. Um, seeing hidden ads, sometimes ads aren't obvious. Products might be placed in a show or a video without clearly telling us that it's an ad. And knowing this helps us not to be tricked into buying things. So asking questions about what we see and hear is very important and it's an underlying uh, skill for media literacy. We should think about why something is shown in a certain way and what do the creators want us to think or feel. Thinking this way helps a lot um, for us to understand media better and not just to believe in everything that you see. That takes us to the next section of this webinar, and that's the art of conversation and how conversation can help fostering self-love. So the title of this slide is quite telling. Conversations, when done right, are indeed an art. And in these dialogues lies the power to instill and foster self-love. So this illustration beautifully ca captures the essence of our topic today. A parent and a child engaged in what appears to be a heartfelt conversation with the symbol of love, the heart, and it underscores the, transform the transformative power of meaningful dialogues and the warmth and understanding that they can bring. So conversations about body image are not always easy. They can be fraught with sensitivities, misconceptions and emotions, yet they are vital. 
as caregivers and guardians, it's our responsibility to create a safe space for these dialogues, ensuring that our children feel seen, heard and understood. Take a moment to observe the words in the speech bubbles. Can you relate to any of them from your childhood or have you heard your child maybe express a similar sentiments? Recognizing and emphasizing with these feelings is the first stop in fostering open communication, although it may not be real uh, descriptions of their bodies, it may be how they perceive their body image. And most importantly, when we talk about these feelings, do not discard them, rather explore them and where these feelings are coming. Because we often tell the child, if they say, I think I'm fat, you tell them, but you're not fat. I think I'm ugly, but you're not ugly, you are beautiful. You are then not valuing how they feel about their bodies. And it's better than to work from where they are and help them to explore and see it than discarding their thinking about their own body image. Um, so if I think I'm stubby or I think I'm bony, that, that's what we're going to work with. We're not going to tell them it's the other way. We're not going to discard it. It's better to explore and go into that journey with them so that they can explore this with you. So initiating healthy dialogues is all about starting the conversation. So navigating the waters of body image conversations with our young ones can sometimes feel like really treading uncharted territory. The question is, how do we start these conversations in a way that it feels natural and not forced? Our image today showcases a parent and a child engrossed in TV programs together. Now, it's a relatable scene for many of us. Uh, media in all its forms often presents both opportunities, but also challenges. In this context, it's an opportunity. Television, movies or even adver advertisements can really serve as an effective conversation starter about body images, especially when they portray certain stereotypes or ideals. Imagine a scene where a character is teased for, teased for their appearance, or perhaps there's an advertisement promoting an ideal body type. These moments can really be turned into opportunities. A simple question like, how did, they make you, how did that make you feel? Or what do you think about that? can open doors in deeper discussions. And I'll get back to those later in this talk. So the art of conversation is just, it's just not, uh, it's, isn't just only about what you say, but it's also about when you say it. Timing, as they say, is everything, and picking the right moment can make a significant difference in how our children receive and process information. Using media as a catalyst is as a strategy many of us can really employ, given its pervasive pres presence in our lives. Now, the visuals here depict common scenarios where, which we encounter daily a family movie night, reading sessions, or maybe uh, simply walks in the park. While these might seem mundane, they are ripe with potential for initiating conversations. And they, they're familiar non-confrontational settings where genuine dialogues can emerge. So recognizing these moments and leveraging them um, can lay the groundwork for open, honest and impactful discussions on body image. So one of the key techniques to, to foster engaging discussions is to ask open-ended questions. Yes, no questions, though direct, often close the door to deep insights or the sharing of experiences. For instance, ask, um, asking, did you like it? can simply elicit a yes or no without delving into the reasons why. Open-ended questions encourage the respondent to reflect and to articulate their feelings or thoughts in a more detailed manner. It's like opening a door for them to share their story, experiences and feelings. So consider the difference between asking, was that movie good versus what do you think about, what did you think about the movie? More examples of open-ended questions about body image 
uh, what does beauty mean to you? How do you feel when you see models or influences on social media? Um, are there things you wish you could change about your appearance? Why? How do you think the media influences our ideas about our bodies? Uh, have you ever felt pressured to look in a certain way? Where did that pressure come from? And have you ever seen something in a movie or on TV that make you feel differently about your body? And these are the open-ended questions that we can use for very useful conversations about body image. And then the, the power of active listening. Active listening means really trying to understand what somebody is saying and not just hearing their words. Uh, think about when someone tells you something personal and you're really, um, really there with them, showing them that you care. It makes people feel important and understood. Today, everyone wants to be truly listened to. It's about getting the feelings behind the words as well. So when you listen actively, you show it by nodding, saying things like, I get it, or that sounds hard, and really being there with the person. It's a way to really connect with them and extremely helpful when talking to kids and teens about their body image. So if they tell you something about their body, use active listening and do not just discard what they're saying, rather get them to talk more and tell you more so that you can understand the context they are talking from when they talk in their bodies uh, in a negative manner. And then it's also important to create a safe space. A safe space isn't just a physical environment, it's also an emotional and psychological environment where one feels free to share, by, um, share, to be vulnerable and to express without fear. So when, you, when they tell you something, try to avoid quick judgments, judgments as I said. Jumping to conclusions or a quickly judging can hinder genuine understanding and may defer someone from opening up in the future. So if you tell them, but that's not true, you're basically accusing them as liars. Rather work with their body image and try to improve it from there by opening their eyes to see what you see when you look at them. Keeping an open mind is crucial. Every individual's experience and feelings are valid and unique to them. So beware of the danger of dismissals. Dismissing or minimizing someone's feeling or experience can be deeply hurtful and discouraging. Um, it will stop them talking to you about it again. Phrases like, it's not a, a big deal or you'll get over it can be very detrimental. They can shut down uh, communication and create barriers. So it's very important that if they feel that they are ugly, they feel they are fat, they feel that they are not, um, they're not good enough, uh, they're too thin, you need to validate these feelings. So it's essential to remember that validation doesn't necessarily mean agreement. It means acknowledging and accepting someone's feelings and perspective by seeing I can I hear you. I can hear that you feel that you are too thin or that you are not uh, beautiful enough. Um, I see that that's how you feel. So that affirmation um, is really something that's important to them. So you can then if you don't agree, you can also say you can also thank them for sharing that with you um, because that can even make a big difference because then they feel that you really hear them. So the power of self-love is really important and it goes with self-acceptance and it's also building a foundation for self-love. So self-love and acceptance are the cornerstones of a healthy body image. As parents, we play a pivotal role in helping our children cultivate these attributes. So it's important that you will, will um, that when they look in the mirror, that they, um, that they must be, it's not only a child looking in the mirror, it's about how they perceive themselves when they look in the mirror that is important. So if you look at this uh, picture on the screen, the words unique, beautiful, capable is what they also should experience when they look in the mirror, not only the physical attributes that they will see in the mirror, but they also need to feel these validations of themselves and these um, acceptance and self-love um, should be confirmed by the mother. So consistently remind your child of their unique qualities and strengths 
and then celebrate their achievements no matter how small and reinforce that their value isn't solely based on their physical appearance. Um, it's crucial to be mindful of our words and actions. Um, it might feel like something very small to you, but the small comment can sit for someone for the rest of their life. So avoid making any form of negative comments about your own body as well as your child's body. So if you devalue your own body in front of your child, you are modeling to them um, how not to love yourself. Um, so in front of children, you never do that, but you model to them how what is positive uh, body image and what is self-love. And then it's also important to encourage your child to understand and appreciate diversity of human bodies. Introduce them to literature, movies and activities that celebrate all body types and not only what is portrayed in advertisements and in by influencers. So while it's essential to promote self-love, it's equally important to encourage a healthy lifestyle, emphasize the importance of taking care of one's body for health and well-being and not just for aesthetics. Now, you all know that think beauty isn't just skin deep, um, yet it's often overlooked in our appearance driven culture. As caregivers, we must emphasize the multifaceted nature of beauty. So true beauty encompasses a spectrum of qualities from kindness and intelligence to courage and empathy. And each trait adds depth and richness to a person's character. So if these qualities that leave a lasting impact on the world and the people around them, so it's these qualities that we would really like uh, to recognize in our children. Um, and it's essential to frequently remind our children, you are so much more than your appearance. While external beauty can be fleeting and subjective, the values and qualities one possesses remain consistent and um, impactful. So the way one thinks, the, the compassion one shows and the knowledge one acquires are invaluable metrics of our own self-worth. And it's really important to, um, to celebrate individuality. Um, it's often said every person is unique and this isn't just a cliche. Each of us is a blend of experiences, dreams, attributes, and quirks that can be um, replicated. So it's important to really celebrate um, the, the beauty of differences. Our differences aren't just variations, they are what make us special. Um, and in these differences lie our strengths, our stories, and our potential. Whether it's a talent, a passion, or even a physical attribute, these differences should be recognized and celebrated. Um, in a world that often pushes conformity, we, we must champion self-expression and authenticity. Let's teach our children that it's not only okay, but it's also beautiful to be true to oneself. And that starts with you as a parent. You need to model this to your children. Being genuine in a sea of sameness is not just brave, it's a testament to understanding and embracing one's own true self. So how can you develop positive self-perception and equip your child with the right resources to build strong self-worth and a positive body image? So let's look at a few resources, and these are only ideas. Um, there are many, many on the market, but I chose a few just to illustrate this point. So let's start off with discussing books aimed at, for instance, younger children that focuses on promoting body uh, positivity and self-acceptance. And these books play a crucial role in fostering confidence and self-worth early on. So first up, we have uh, I Like Myself by Karen Beaumont. So this engaging book is filled with joyful rhymes that celebrate self-love irrespective of one's appearance. And this is such a beautiful example. I like myself inside out, upside down, from head to toe and all around. I like it all. It's all it all is me and me is all I want to be. And these rhymes really become the memor memorable language the, that your child will then start using to describe themselves. So 
buying these books are really great. Another one is The Skin You Live In. Um, it, it's by Michael Tyler, and it's not just about uh, skin color, but it's also about how our skin in every hue is, is something to, to be celebrated. It's a lovely book about embracing diversity. So I like this page where it says, think how lucky you are that the skin you live in so beautifully holds the you who's within and the skin all people live in. Um, a wonderful book for the little ones and it really opens up wonderful conversations as well if you read this together. And last book for, um, for this age group for younger is Your Body is Awesome. Um, it's a wonderful book and it's it focusing on function and ability rather than appearance. And it's a really a refreshing take on how children should view their bodies. All of these books are available on online platforms. Now for teens, you also get amazing books. Um, and well, let's start with um, The Care and Keeping of You uh, by Valerie Schaefer. This book serves as a fantastic guide for pre-teens navigating challenges of growing up. It provides clear, helpful advice on the changes that come from with puberty, ensuring kids understand and embrace these changes. It's a must read for those stepping into adolescence. Another wonderful book is Wonder, and this novel is just for just is, is not just for kids, but readers of all ages. Um, a wonderful book that you can read with your child. It, it tells the touching story of Aggie, a boy born with a facial difference and his journey of fitting into a mainstream school. Now, through this main character, we learn all about kindness, empathy, and the importance of seeing beyond the surface. For teens, you get wonderful body image workbooks. Um, and one of my favorite books on mindfulness for teens is this A Girl's Guide to Mindfulness Being You. Um, and it really equips your teen with wonderful um, experiences that you can also use for talking, but even without any guidance, they can just read this because they will get so much more, uh, so much out of these books. There are many documentaries that you can watch with your teen, which will really help you to start a positive uh, conversation. Some of these documentaries you need to watch first because some of them might have a little bit of an adult net nature. So you can use this with your late high school children. Um, so a good one is starting off with the Dove's Real Beauty Sketches. This impactful campaign by Dove presents a unique um, experiment where individuals describe themselves to a forensic artist. Now, the difference between self-perception and how others see them is eye-opening, and it emphasizes the message that we are often our harshest critics. Um, it's a reminder of how skewed our self-image can become due to the pressure, pressures of society. And then moving on to a BBC documentary, The Truth About Looking Good. Now, this documentary delves deep into the beauty industry, debunking myths and unveiling surprising facts about beauty products and routines. It's not just about the aesthetic appeal, but the science and psychology behind beauty. It's a fantastic watch for those curious about the mechanisms behind the beauty world. And then embrace some of the images really need supervision, but for your late, late high school children, this might already be um, very useful for them. So this powerful film by um, Terry Brumford explores the global issue of body loathing, uh, inspiring us to change the way we feel and think about our bodies. Now, through her journey across the world, Taryn interviews a range of women and delves into the complexity of body image. Embrace encourages viewers to accept and love their bodies just as they are. There are many apps and online platforms available, and I've just picked up three, but there are literally hundreds and hundreds of these. So A Mighty Girl is an incredible resource that spotlights empowering, um, empowering female characters. It's not just about uh, books or movies, but a broad spectrum of media where young girls can see strong, resilient and diverse female characters. In a world where representation matters so much, a mighty girl champions the cause uh, by giving young girls um, heroes they can relate to. Um, the Body Positive is also a platform that takes on the important mission of nurturing body positivity. 
They focus on helping individuals, especially the young, to appreciate their bodies for what they can do rather than how they look. Um, they, uh, the, their approach resolves around self-love, self-care, and building on authentic sense of self-worth, moving away from the unrealistic standards uh, often portrayed in media. And last, but no, me uh, no means least, uh, Happy Not Perfect. This is a wonderful platform dedicated to promoting mindfulness and mental well-being among young people. Now, in the age of constant digital connectivity, where comparison and self-doubt can be amplified, Happy Not Perfect offers tools and resources to manage stress, stay grounded, and cultivate a positive mindset. And these are only examples of three. And as I said, there are literally hundreds of these apps that you can use. And it's a world that the children really understand and can relate to. Our last bit is focusing on signs of body dissatisfaction. It's very important that we will recognize these, um, these signs um, from our child so that we can do something about that. So early recognition and proactive strategies are crucial in fostering a positive self-image in children. So catching signs early is really important. Noticing when a child starts expressing doubts or negativity about their appearance or abilities can really help you in addressing issues, issues head on. Again, it's all about open communication. Communication regularly, discussing feelings, challenges, and victories with children ensures they feel heard and understood. Um, it's also important to expose um, them to diverse role models introducing children to a variety of positive role models with different bodies can really help them appreciate differences and understand there's no single standard of beauty or success. Educating about media literacy is also very important. So teaching kids to critically evaluate media messages can really reduce the impact of unrealistic beauty and success standards. And then affirmation and validation consistently reinforce a child's worth, skills, and unique qualities can build their self-esteem. And then encouraging diverse activities, allowing kids to explore various hobbies and skills that help them to discover their strengths and pa passions further than boosting only their self-worth. So there are things that you need to can look out for. Verbal cues such as negative self-talk, and the, when you pick up these cues, it's really time to consult a professional. So when your child expresses a lot of negative self-talk, like I wish I looked like this person, they compare themselves, why can't I be as thin as this person? If they start showing behavioral cues, like drastic changes in eating patterns, avoiding activities like swimming or gym, and then overemphasis on grooming or dressing, they, sometimes they can be emotional cues where they just withdraw from any social interactions. There might be mood fluctuations or they get easily upset when appearance is discussed. Um, and it's important that you need to educate them, them about body diversity um, and explain to them that beauty is subjective and ever changing. Um, and then try to expose them to content that showcases diverse representation. And then most of all, you need to limit harmful media exposure. So restrict overexposure to ads promoting unrealistic standards. So you need to, you need to um, limit exposure to TikTok and all these uh, platforms that are built on a very unrealistic standard of beauty and educate them about digital alterations and Photoshop and all these filters that you can use, and then also prioritize age-appropriate content. Try to make um, them engage with positive peer interaction. So encourage friendships that uplift and support. Um, discuss the harmful effects of body shaming or bullying and promote group activities that focus on skills and team efforts rather than being popular and um, money and uh, how you look. And then again, you need to talk a lot about values over aesthetics. So praise the qualities like kindness, intelligence and resilience in their friends and people they meet, um, even online, um, even in movies. 
praise these qualities rather than focusing on the physical appearance. Um, and then self-worth isn't tied to appearance alone. And then celebrate achievements that are not related to books. It's time now for questions. If there are any, you can either type your question in the chat box or you can we can even open it up for you if you want to ask questions. You are sorry to interrupt. Unfortunately, our Q&A session is not working tonight, but if they have any questions, I think they can just contact their school um, and they, they will share the deck with them and the link to the event as well. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, really, I hope this was a useful session for you. Thanks for joining us. And remember to join us next Monday again at six o'clock when we'll have our next parent webinar. It was wonderful for you to have you here online and have a wonderful week. Thank you so much and goodbye.